Pranam Acharya Ji. Acharya Ji, I keep on changing. For some days I'll feel extremely hopeful and close to God. And on other days, a strong feeling of skepticism and helplessness overtakes me. On some days, the songs of Kabir Sahib will mesmerize the hell out of me. On other days, they won't seem so appealing. For short periods of time, the mind completely loses interest in spirituality. You have spoken of how these states of the mind are transient. But what worries me is that it is during these periods that the grip of Maya starts becoming stronger. The mind gets entangled into unnecessary worldly stuff. However, soon enough, that strong feeling of re love rekindles again and the cycle continues. Even though the ego shows its disgusting faces hundred times a day and makes me realize how desperately I need God, still such a state of mind will inevitably show up. Acharyaji, I am afraid. Is it possible that Maya will come towards me strong enough and beat me to the point of no return? What should I do in such periods? In such periods, you are telling yourself, Mutasim, that you are no more spiritual. You consider yourself spiritual only when Kabir Sahib's songs appear appealing to you. Only when the mind inclines towards spiritual literature. That is when you authorize yourself to be called spiritual. At other times, when Kabir Sahib does not appear so interesting or spiritual stuff or literature does not appeal to you so much, then you call yourself unspiritual or worldly or 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 you know maya ridden just change the nomenclature spirituality is not something limited to or defined by your mental states When you are spiritually inclined, it is one kind of spirituality. When the mind is not spiritually inclined, it is another kind of spirituality. It is not the opposite of spirituality, it is just another kind of spirituality. It's like lovers, you know. They love each other when they love each other. And they love each other when they hate each other. Hatred is just another kind of, kind of love. But if you will start taking the word hatred very seriously, then you may enter into streams of action that might not be good for you. Hmm? Give yourself the right to unabashedly declare on certain days, oh, you know what, I hate Kabir Sahib. That's okay. If you are really a lover of Kabir, your love gives you a right to declare shamelessly your hatred as well. Lovers ought to be honest, no? You need to tell the fellow on his face. Yep. 
songs are disgusting today you know as disgusting as your shabby beard why don't you go shave that's okay hmm have you not gone deeply into the songs of saints mutasim have you seen sometimes how bitterly they complain it's almost as if they would beat up god if today he appeared physically in front of them they are so rough on certain days it's almost they are warning god today i am very very sore do not show up <laughs> for your own good do not show up today lovers have that right it's okay ulahna is found very commonly in bhakti literature what is ulahna complaint, complaint. in fact there is hardly any poet in the bhakti tradition who would have not thrown ulahna at him just yesterday night somebody was singing tum ek gorak dhanda ho you have the right to tell him you are <laughs> hmm have you seen how bulle shah sometimes scolds him kyu ole bebe jhaki da e parda kis to rakhi da why are you hiding there and why do you keep hiding is it my business to keep searching for you entire life <laughs> and your only job is to keep hiding <laughs> if you are an honest lover you gain the rights to say whatever you want go only on some days do not make it a habit hmm love is a vast sky it has no opposite it is so vast that it has space enough for hatred in love you can hate as well hmm? and that would not reduce your love do not feel guilty provided your love is vast enough and you can have love so vast only for vastness that vastness is called truth or god or freedom what kind of a lover would keep saying only good things about the beloved the whole affair would get very boring you know only nice things you have to say about him when the bagger is so very majestic and full of himself that he keeps sitting high on some seventh sky and you are shouting from below hello sir can you show up some day so 
So man has all the right to be a little pissed off. <laughs> Dear Acharya Ji Pranam, in a few of your videos you have mentioned to leave the mind alone and to not associate with the mind. Association is suffering. The mind by itself is like the tricks of the monkey. Kabir Sahib asks to surrender and chop off the head first before entering the temple. Acharya Ji, does Kabir Sahib to mean the same thing? Is he to asking me to not to associate myself with the mind when he asks me to chop off the head? Kindly guide. Yes, obviously. Jyoti. The hand holds the offering when you enter the temple. It could be a dia, the small earthen lamp. Hmm? And the hand holds the sword when you enter the battle. Kabir Sahib says, before you enter the battle, sever your head. Chop off your head first and then enter the battle. Now who is to fight the war? The hand that holds the sword. If the head is present, the head will try to control the hand. Whereas the fact is that the head, when he says the head, he does not mean the brain. He means the ego, ego the eye sense. Whereas the fact is that the head has no role in the war. The war is to be fought by the hand. But the eye sense, the head will unnecessarily interfere and will try to guide rather dictate. The hand will become controlled by the head. If the head is present, the head will start controlling the hand that is holding the sword, the hand that is fighting. And then the hand will not be able to receive direct instructions from him. It is a war that you fight for him. Kabir Sacha Surma Lade Dhani Ke Het. You are fighting the war for him, for nobody else but him, not for yourself, but for. This is a war that you fight for him, and therefore, this is a war that you can fight only under his direct instructions. If this is present, then this will interfere with his instructions. The hand can fight dictated by the ego or the hand can fight guided by the heart. When the hand fights under the instructions of the ego, then the fight is for the preservation of the personal self. That's what most of us fight for. We too fight a lot. But what is the objective of all our fights? 
self preservation that happens when the master of the hand is the head and in the holy battle in the dharm yudh the hand fights supervised directly by him kavi sahab says why don't you just take out the very possibility of some middle man interfering this is the middle man before you fight the enemy take him out first now the war is already as good as one now you just have to complete the formalities because the real enemy anyway was not outside the real enemy was here if you could defeat this before engaging with the enemy outside then the war is 99% won conquer yourself before you take on the world it was a movie song and it was also used as a morning prayer in some schools हमको मन की शक्ति देना मन विजय करे दूसरों की जय से पहले खुद की स्वयं की जय करें हुँ?